let's hear now from uh, Professor Mike Parker Pearson. Um, no better person to tell us um, why uh, the, the road scheme that Kate has just been demonstrating and illustrating why it would be so damaging in archaeological terms. So, Mike, thanks very much for coming here. Hugely grateful. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Tom. Right now, let's. Uh, this should be setting up. Um, I want to start off with a series of questions about um, uh, the archaeology and uh, uh, based on some of the questions already come in, what's so special about the World Heritage Site? Why should we oppose the scheme? What do we know about the archaeology that would be lost? And isn't the archaeology in fact all going to be recorded before the road is constructed? And finally, why are some archaeologists actually in favour of the scheme? So to start off, why is well, what is so special about the World Heritage Site? And of course, it's not just Stonehenge. It's the fact that this is a landscape packed with many impressive standing monuments, earth monuments in particular, but also below ground, there are um, not just hundreds, but thousands of, uh, in fact, millions of, of archaeological artifacts and, and other remains. Uh, and hardly a year goes by without some major discovery being made within the World Heritage Site that hits the international news. Uh, so, of course, this is um, a period of our history for which we have no written records, and consequently the remains themselves are the only source of information. So they are extremely precious because once they are gone, they are gone for good. So why should we oppose the scheme? And uh, I think we have to remember that the World Heritage Site is within an area that's been massively encroached upon in the last, um, uh, in the last 20 years so that it is, uh, is left really an island of conservation, which is now the World Heritage Site. So damaging development within that island really has to be resisted, not just in the meantime, but in perpetuity. And unfortunately, the, uh, the, the road scheme uh, would indeed be the most extensive and damaging intrusion since the inscription of Stonehenge and Avery together on the World Heritage Site list in 1986. Now, um, why we should have opposed the scheme? Very simply, the tunnel's just not long enough. Um, 3.2 kilometres, the World Heritage Site is over five kilometres across at that point. It's a very out-of-date scheme, I'm afraid. I was there at English Heritage in the late 1980s when it was dreamed up. And here we are, what, 50 years later, or it will be 50 years later, uh, when it actually becomes operational. And I'm afraid the world has changed in so many ways that we're all aware of. And we have to wonder whether this really is the most suitable way of solving the problems that were perceived uh, in the 1980s. But from the archaeology, the most important thing is that that road line will ensure the complete destruction of 10 hectares of the World Heritage Site. Uh, most of it in the two uh, stretches outside of the western and eastern portals where the tunnel emerges, but also the very uh, corner in the top left, the northwest corner of the World Heritage Site, is also going to be damaged by road building. And the thing about, as you saw from uh, Kate's uh, uh, drawings, uh, Kate's pictures, uh, it's a total destruction. Nothing will be left. Very different to all the excavations that have taken place for research in the World Heritage Site because everything there is simply put back. What isn't taken away for the museum actually goes back in the ground, broadly in the place where it came out of. So what makes um, Stonehenge so special is its archaeology and its earthworks, amongst other things. Uh, Kate's already made the point that 
the earthworks produced by the new scheme will completely dwarf those of the World Heritage Site itself. Um, as has already been mentioned, UNESCO recommended that the scheme be refused because of unacceptable damage to archaeology and negative impact on the landscape. And I'm afraid what this means is that in the eyes of the rest of the world, we're not properly looking after our particular bit of the planet's world heritage. And as uh, already explained, um, it's a decision that the Planning Commission was indeed refused only to be overturned. So what do we know about the archaeology that would be lost? And outside of the Western Portal, um, evaluation work done by uh, contractors for, the, uh, for Highways England, uh, just looking at the plough soil, um, produced many thousands of artefacts. They're marked in this uh, map here in blue, so the, the sizes of the blobs indicate the densities of finds, mostly uh, strut flint and flint, art flint artefacts and flint tools. And the density is quite staggering, as you can see, in several areas. The road line uh, uh, is going to, is the area marked in green. And uh, what we know from this is that not only from their sampling, their 1% sample of that plough soil, we can reckon that there will be 381,000 prehistoric flint artefacts that will simply be destroyed, machined off, before the actual uh, excavation of what's underneath the plough soil uh, takes place. We know from preliminary, preliminary analysis of these finds that a good number of them are the remains of a settlement of the period that we call the Copper Age and the Early Bronze Age. So this would be an area of settlement for uh, people in prehistory that we know as the Beaker people. And potentially this was their campsite when they were building the later stages of Stonehenge, stages three and four, uh, around 2000 BC. Outside the eastern portal, the densities are not quite so great, but the, the, the material recovered indicates that a lot of it derives from a period where we know very little, well, virtually nothing, I have to say, about settlement in the Stonehenge landscape. And this is from the early Neolithic. This is from the time that they were building long barrows. And in fact, the Western route is passing through the densest cluster of Neolithic long barrows anywhere in Britain. So the settlement on the Eastern side may be really very important. And again, an estimated 142,000 flint artifacts in the plough soil under the current proposals for investigation are simply going to be bulldozed. Now, further out um, uh, to the east, uh, Kate has already mentioned the Mesolithic site of Blickmead. Although it is physically not affected, there is concern that the uh, construction will uh, create or cause hydrological changes. Uh, in, uh, and lowering the water table and uh, there is a uh, worry that potentially organic deposits will be destroyed that uh, materials that are in what deposits that are currently waterlogged may end up drying out and and vanishing and then finally the the third area a much smaller one right up in the, the top uh, northwest corner and relatively small damage, but nonetheless, 20, 21,000 flint artifacts in the plough soil. Why are finds in the plough soil so important? And for those of us who work with prehistory, the time of Stonehenge is a time when actually people in the main weren't digging pits and ditches. They were living their lives on the ground surface, living in ephemeral houses and leaving few holes into the ground, the occasional grave, the occasional pit, maybe a, a tree hole where a tree had blown over, um, 
dumping material in there or, or, or using it as a working area. But most of their, their life and work was conducted on the surface. And of course, those layers have all been ploughed and all of the finds from those activities are in that plough soil. So we as archaeologists working within the World Heritage Site have known that to really understand what they were doing in these successive periods of prehistory from the Mesolithic through to the Bronze Age, you have to intensively sample that plough soil. And that means getting out there with shovels and spades and sieves and sieving the soil in metre squares to actually extract all of the artefacts, most of them are flint. And then you can plot out meter by meter the distributions to give you a picture of how people lived in that uh, landscape and how that, that changed through time. It's only through doing that really detailed work that you'll get that. Unfortunately, the uh, highways agency's approach is basically to strip and then record what has actually survived beneath the plough soil. And I'm afraid that is a minuscule proportion of the total remains. Now they were advised by the scientific committee that was appointed that equivalent standards should be applied to their work as to anyone else working in the World Heritage Site. They refused to do this. They considered it expensive and that it would take too long even though such a, such a process could be mechanized. And the result is that their sampling is only going, or they, they have prepared to pay for sampling that will only be minimal. And we will see half a million worked flints and other prehistoric artifacts lost without recovery. Worst of all, they're just going to be scattered over various parts of the World Heritage, Heritage Site, completely out of context. It's an unacceptable level of damage. So isn't the archaeology going to be recorded before the road is constructed? And indeed, the contract uh, company that, uh, that, that won the contract, Wessex Archaeology, they are indeed among the best archaeological contractors in the world, and I've every confidence they'll, that they'll do an excellent job if they can recruit enough staff. Uh, at the moment, we're somewhere around a thousand people short for working in commercial archaeology in Britain uh, due to the, the current political circumstances with Europe. But however good Wessex are, they can only do as much as they're allowed by the brief that they've been given by Highways England and by the, the heritage agencies who have been backing the scheme with the Department of Transport since the 1980s. So they're not going to be required to map or recover the majority of artifacts. They've so far recovered just 1%. They're talking about levels of percentage under 10, no more than 12 and a half percent for the rest of, of the work. But it shouldn't just be the plough soil. They're not prepared to fully, uh, highways are not prepared to ask for even all of the uh, sub-surface features to be excavated, notably the tree hollows, which uh, may contain prehistoric remains. They're only going to look at just, um, what, 12.5% of those, not the 100% that uh, many of us would recommend. And I'm afraid this is a flagrant breach of the usual standards that are met by archaeologists working in the World Heritage Site. Just to give you an example of what this means uh, in archaeological terms, uh, we were working on a number of sites between Stonehenge and the Western Portal uh, back in 2008, and I just take an example that I've worked at from just one of our trenches, um, and it, it's 30 meet, it was 30 metres long by 10 metres wide, so that's 301 metre squares, we hand dug and sieved every single square. That's what we were required to do by English Heritage and the National Trust. We required, um, uh, these are the requirements that, the, that they didn't require the uh, Highways England to abide by. And I, I plotted out 
the distribution of what we call the diagnostic tools. Now, these are the tools that are really important because these tell us the date of activity and they're also diagnostic of the type of activities carried out. In this case, we're looking at Bronze Age scrapers, Bronze Age flint scrapers. And you can see uh, on the left hand side, we've got that we actually recovered seven of them within, within that area. Now, they constitute something like 2% of the total flint artifacts. So if we were to sample at 16%, which is already higher than, the, than Highways England are prepared uh, uh, to ask the contractors to do, we wouldn't have found any of them. Even if we sampled a third of the area, we're only likely to find just one. And even well over 50% at 64%, you can see, well, we pick up four. So uh, only at that point are we beginning, would we be beginning to get an idea of the diagnostic material and what it tells us about the date and the type of activities. And of course, scrapers uh, are used for, for cleaning hides, amongst other things. So to finish off, why are some archaeologists in favour of the scheme? And there's no doubt that some think that a short tunnel's better than no tunnel, and that we should just settle for the compromise, close our eyes to the archaeological damage, and bite the bullet. Some think it's entirely acceptable to lose over half a million flint artefacts in the plough soil, and I think it can only be because they don't understand that that uh, uh, the, 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 that there's valuable information on the spatial and chronological distribution of activities of the prehistoric people who lived in the landscape. Others say, well, we're going to do, oh, one, two, three, four percent sampling. It's not adequate because you have to do high percentage sampling to recover enough of those rare diagnostic artifacts, uh, as I explained with the previous slide. Some also say that short tunnels better than the longer but cheaper surface route going around the south of the World Heritage Site and avoiding it there. Um, but as far as we know, there is no significant archaeology in that area at all. And finally, and I think this is quite an important reason, there are archaeologists who don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to jeopardise their standing with the heritage agencies. Uh, they, you know, many of them are consultants and uh, they live in part of, uh, of consultancy work. And we should also remember that none of the archaeologists who work for the heritage agencies who are working together with Highways England can even risk saying what they really think of this scheme. Uh, as you know, these organisations have been shedding jobs uh, such as the National Trust and, uh, and English Heritage. Um, and I, I'm afraid it's very sad uh, that you know, their lack of concern, I think, undoubtedly is contributing further to our declining reputation for being able to protect not just our historic environment. Remember, this is the historic environment for the world. Anyway, I'll end there and uh, ask you back to Tom. Thank you very much, Mike. I mean, uh, uh brilliant exposition of, of why this scheme is disgraceful in archaeological terms and the sheer scale of the scandal that is threatening the reputation of this country as, as a place that cares about its, its past.